those joining us online. Also, a special welcome to our guests here this day. If we've not met, my name is Bill Tim. I've been the pastor here for over 18 years, and uh, welcome to you all. Note the announcements in the bulletin. The flowers placed by Carol Schock in memory of her husband, Don, and we thank her for those. There are a number of other announcements in the back of the bulletin. Our last Lenten, Wednesday Lenten service is this Wednesday at 6 p.m. The soup supper is at 4.30, and all are invited. Note the Bible study and the Gospel of John continues on Mondays at 12.30 and 2.30, and also on, online on Thursday. And that uh, website is available from the church office. Just call and it will be sent to you, the link. Note also the other announcements on page 22 and 3. If you're headed north soon to catch your last snowstorm, uh, please, please uh, make note of when you're leaving and when you might be back uh, on your communion slip so that we can keep the newsletter coming in whatever direction it's supposed to be going. We give thanks to all who have been contributing to the Ukraine relief through Lutheran Rural Relief, and I believe we'll send that other check hopefully this week or so. That's a great total. Easter lilies. If you're looking at sponsoring an Easter lily in honor of someone or memory of someone, there should be envelopes in your pews, and all the details are there. We need to have those today, though, because they need to be called in tomorrow. A new session of Grief Share begins this coming Monday. Uh, at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall classroom. If you know of someone who could benefit, please uh, refer them. You'll also note that there is a sign-up slip for Easter breakfast in your bulletin. If you're, they really need to know how many to prepare for, so it would be helpful if you're planning on being there. Fill that out and simply place that in the offering as it comes by. Also note that the women of the church have their special project, the Days for Girl Pro Girls Project, and they're working on that again this coming Saturday from 9 to 1. You'll also see the Holy Week schedule listed there. Note for those who ordered uh, logo church logo t-shirts, they are available in back, and Joe Johnson will help you with that right after worship. Also today there is a well-endowed potluck in the fellowship hall following worship. We would ask all who can to stay because it's more than, than uh, anyone ever expected to see there. As we worship this day, we celebrate our Lord's Supper. Our Lord's Supper is open to all baptized believers who trust in Jesus as Savior and who seek to learn to live with him as Lord of all of life. It is, at this time, served around the altar. Some kneel, some stand, according to what the doctor has told them about their knees. Uh, you'll receive in your hand the uh, wafer of bread, which is the body of Christ, and you will uh, also have a choice between two liquids. One is lighter colored, an individual cup, the, uh, a juice, and then the other one is the darker colored liquid, which is wine, and that the, is the blood of Christ. We do ask that you would kindly fill out one of these uh, communion Slips that you see in the pew rack, there is room for prayer concerns at the bottom that will be given to the prayer ministry later today. On the reverse side are a number of other options for you to consider. Please stand. We begin our worship on page four in the folded bullets, and as we affirm together that God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us silently confess our sin against God and one another. Merciful God, Jesus shows us all the ways that we fall short. He also provides a way out of the holes we dig ourselves into. Forgive us our sins and show us how to make better choices. Be better friends, parents, kids, partners, and co-workers. Let Christ's light shine through us. For the sake of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on us the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
our gathering hymn number 521. We continue our worship on page six in the folded bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Together we pray, God of justice, Jesus faced an unjust system. Help us to work toward justice so that the system can work for all. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the worship carol. We will read the 146th Psalm responsively. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Please stand for the singing of the gospel acclamation and the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel for this fifth Sunday of Lent from the Gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! 
and striking him in the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to, and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to be cru- to them to be crucified. The gospel of our Lord. Praise Please be seated. A little old lady got arrested for stealing a can of peaches from a grocery store. At the trial, the judge asks her why she stole the can of peaches. She replies, Your Honor, my husband and I don't have much and we're very poor. I was simply trying to do something about my hunger. The judge, feeling sorry for the old lady, asked how many peaches were in the can. She replied, Six. Then, said the judge, You will spend one day in jail for each peach. Your Honor, said her husband, She also stole a can of peas. (laughs) It is not unusual for people to try to influence the outcome of a trial in a way they believe that will benefit them personally, just like this lady's loving husband. For the last few weeks, we've been hearing from John's Gospel about how Jesus was arrested in Gethsemane, how he was taken to Annas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, because Annas was the real power behind the office of the high priest. We learned that the Jewish leadership had broken more than 18 of their own laws regarding fair trials, but they were determined to get the outcome that they wanted that would benefit their goal of staying in power. Then the chief priest and the temple police took Jesus from the courtyard of Caiaphas, the high priest that year, after uh, where Peter had denied knowing Jesus, and they took him to Pilate's headquarters. And there things begin to unfold. The Jewish religious leaders brought Jesus to Pilate at what, those, at what people would call an uncivilized hour. In other words, it was way early in the morning because they wanted to get this business taken care of. Now, Pilate was the local Roman ruler at the time, and he really didn't want anything to do with this case at all. He wanted the Jewish officials to deal with it themselves, as he found no real charges there for any crimes that Jesus had committed. It would be hard to believe, though, that anyone in government wouldn't have their ear to the ground, if you will, wouldn't have some kind of intelligence service that uh, would help them know what was going on in the area that they were governing. Surely they had heard 
that Jesus was the new thing, if you will, that he had been doing signs, wonders, miracles, and things that no one else had ever done. So the Jewish officials told Pilate that they did not have the authority to put anyone to death. But by admitting that, they already were admitting the kind of outcome that they wanted. So Pilate goes back inside and questions Jesus again. Who was he? What had he done? Was he a king? Where was his kingdom? And lastly, what is truth? Pilate was frustrated, and finally he went back out to the Jewish leaders and reminded them that it was the custom that Pilate would release for them one prisoner during the feast of the Passover. Pilate's question to them was if they wanted him to release Jesus for them, as he referred to him as the the king of the Jews. And they responded, not this man, but Barabbas. Now, the text tells us that Barabbas was a bandit. So it's after this that he has Jesus flogged. In other words, he has him cruelly whipped. So Jesus is standing there, bleeding and naked, except for some kind of like purple shawl that's described as a robe. And the soldiers are probably vulgar in their comments that they're making to Jesus. And they seem to be really enjoying this form of torture because they took every opportunity to degrade, to deface, to denigrate Jesus. And with this short robe on and this reed in his hand, they also place on his head a crown of thorns. Now, we have a a thorny little crown up here, but it's nothing like the one that they would have had in the Middle East. Because the thorns referred to here are very long, up to three and a half inches in length. The soldiers made this crown and they shoved it down on his head. So no doubt they pierced the skin of Jesus and more blood began to run down over his face. This whole scene was one of mockery and shame. And Pilate goes out again to address the mobs and says to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you again to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus comes out naked except for this short purple shoulder covering, and Pilate says to them, here is the man. The chief priests and the temple police, who were not at all unbiased enforcers of the law, because they were employed by the temple, begin to shout, crucify him, crucify him. Now, we don't know much about crucifixion in our day and time, but crucifixion was a Roman form of execution, and it was forbidden by Jewish law because it was torture. But here the chief priest and the temple police are demanding this torturous form of death for Jesus. If you go back to historians from that area, you can find out that some 50,000 to 100,000 Jews were themselves crucified by the Romans in the first century. So it's ironic to see them here asking for crucifixion. Pilate tells them, you do it yourselves. I find no case against him. And of course, then the Jews raise the point of their own law. We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he claimed to be the son of God. Well, as you can imagine, Pilate was uneasy before, but now he was getting truly afraid. It was one thing for him to condemn an innocent man. It was even worse to condemn one who might be a Jewish Messiah. But to crucify the Son of God, that was an entirely different matter. Now, it's doubtful that Pilate really believed that these claims were true, It's just that he wasn't certain that they were false. Pilate was caught in the middle between the shouting mob 
and a man he now understood was claiming to be more than a king, that he was the son of God. So Pilate goes back inside to question Jesus some more. Where did you come from? But Jesus keeps silent. And Pilate reminds him that he holds all the power. And Jesus reminds Pilate that what power Pilate has was allowed by God. So in all reality, who's really in control of the situation? Again, Pilate tries to release Jesus, but the Jewish leaders cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be king, a king sets himself against the emperor. What is a friend of the emperor? A friend of the emperor was someone who had the emperor's ear, who was seen somehow as closely aligned with the ruler, but it was a tenuous position. If you lost that favored position, swift death was often the result. So finally, Pilate's had enough. He brings Jesus outside. He sits on the judge's bench and he says, here is your king. And they cry out, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate asks them, shall I crucify your king? And that brings us to the climax here. The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. And Jesus was handed over to be crucified. These were good Jewish people. They knew they should have no king but God. And here they're saying we have no king but the emperor. Why would they do that? They wanted to live in peace. They wanted some measure of security. And as their system was set up, it worked for them. Rome wasn't a perfect master by far. But things could have been far worse. So as far as they were concerned at that time, the system worked for them. They were able to use the Roman soldiers to enforce their laws. And in many ways, this putting on this guise of patriotism was to do to keep what rights they had under the Roman government. They figured that since the emperor gave them some rights and they had some luxuries under his system, even uh, including the fact that Caesar's death chamber would also put their enemy to death, they would hold their noses, close their eyes, sleep one more night, and say Caesar's our king, as long as Caesar served their temporary good. Any government in the world, including ours, and the Caesars of the world are powerful entities that are nice to have on your side. And they can perform great things. And you can think that they're there and that they're going to serve your every need. And many Christians today, both from the far left to the far right, both liberal to conservative, think that the government is the key to reforming life here in our country. And because of that, they shroud politics with every noble cause they can think of, even in the church. And they think that the government can make a great ally to whatever issue they want to make in the Christian cause of the time. But so did the Jews. They forgot. There's only one king. As Christians, we can have one king. That is Jesus. Please stand for prayer. Lord, there are so many other things that beckon us to put our trust in them as the way of salvation. Keep us focused on your son, crucified and risen. In his name we pray, amen. Our hymn of the day, number 349.
continue our worship on page 12 in the folded bulletin. As we confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We pray for the church, the world, and all those who stand in need. God, we would sooner argue to justify ourselves and surrender and discover what treasures there may be in yielding to your will. Make Jesus our model of unwavering faithfulness and give us strength to be as courageous in the face of threats to our status and safety. Steadfast Lord. The cries of crucify still ring in our ears every time an innocent is punished every time a guilty one goes unquestioned. Forgive us and show us the way that leads to life. Steadfast Lord. The long repentance season is nearly ended, and the day of reckoning is even nearer. Accompany us on this journey, Lord, secure in the knowledge that your resurrection stands at the other end. Steadfast Lord. For all with no voice, make us advocates, O God, For those who are lonely or feel abandoned, make us companions. For all who suffer any illness or trial, make us bringers of a healing word and a steadying hand. We ask your mercies especially upon the people of Ukraine. Steadfast Lord. For all those who stood trials on behalf of your gospel and all who gave their lives in service to a larger truth, we give thanks. Join us to saints of old and those still among us, and number us among your redeemed. Steadfast Lord. Together we pray. We pray for all of our mission congregations, local partners, and care ministries. We also pray for the congregation's vision process, for God to work so clearly in the process that only God could get the credit, for members to be both dependent on God and confident in God, for our members to have increased sensitivity to discern the leading of the Holy Spirit, for God to enlarge our hearts as church members toward people far from God, for a fresh conviction to speak the truth in love and embrace transparency, for God's wisdom to permeate the process, for an increased passion for the beauty and potential of glory to Christo. When prayers are not enough, move us to act as your faithful servants on earth, empowered by your spirit and inspired by your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, our ushers will come forward to receive our morning's offerings to the Lord's work.
May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in this Holy Supper. Amen. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. We pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our communion assistants will come forward.
Please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you safe in his grace until everlasting life. Amen. We pray, living God, you have greeted us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us, risen to new life with you. Send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord, amen. Our sending hymn number 359. reminder, all, including all guests here, are invited next door to the fellowship hall. There is plenty of food, and fellowship will be better if you are there. Thank you for worshiping here today, and also we thank those worshiping with us online. And remember that Almighty God has created you and has a purpose for your life every day. Lord, help us remember if you are not dead. Live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him and abound in thanksgiving. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is sending you.